Is it on? Hello? Kaboop, kaboop, kaboop. Am I here? Fantastic. Hey, everybody. It's Mike Myers. Uh, as usual, I've been jacking with the sound, so please let me know uh, how I'm coming over sound-wise. Um, so give me, let me know about that. Anyway, hey, good Thursday afternoon, everybody. It's Mike Myers here, your favorite alpha geek. We're going to be talking today with the Mike Myers Ask Me Anything. I've got a lot of announcements I need to give to you today, uh, but for those of you who are new here, understand that this is with the coronavirus and all that, we know so many people are at home and kind of disconnected that this is my way to give back uh, to the community, to give you guys a way to be able to have some communication, uh, to ask any question you want on CompTIA A plus Net what, blah, 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 CompTIA A plus Net plus and Security plus as, and as, other, as well as other certifications too. Um, no religion and politics, please. Uh, but other than that, we're pretty much wide open. Yep, and we're talking here from my, I don't even know what you call this, room in my house, my rumpus room or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so here it is. It's in Houston, Texas. Nice 90 degree day out there because, well, I live in Southern Texas. So feel free to ask any kind of questions you want. Oh, hey, everybody. Good. Thank you. I'm sounding okay. Thank you, Batman. I just, I'm always, I've been tweaking with everything. You, you know, it's hilarious. People always laugh because I'm really good at fixing computers, but if computers were cars, I'm a really good mechanic but I'm a terrible driver. So people always ask me to like work on applications and such. And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm not that great. I mean, I'm user level skills with like office products and I can pretend that I know something about Adobe CC cloud and a few other things. But after that, I'm useless. And all of this webcam streaming software that's out there, it's absolutely incredible. And for the one hour you see me up here talking to y'all, I probably spend five or six hours a day just tweaking stuff because I want to like, for example, I want to be able to have some uh, guests up here. I'm really, I'm trying to get uh, my fellow competitor, Gene Andrews. We had uh, Professor Messer on yesterday and I'm going to see if we can get him back. I want to be able to talk. Uh, so, you know, getting that technology going is uh, surprisingly hard. And uh, I've got a wonderful video production staff and even with everybody, you know, quarantining themselves, you know, people are helping out as best they can here. And I really appreciate those of you who keep tuning in that and on your perseverance, because uh, I guarantee it'll be worth it. Uh, yeah, it's worth it already, right? Also, I do want to mention that this Monday, April 13th, we're going to have our first topicality-based talk. So we're going to be doing Mike's cool tools for the smartphone. Um, this is a collection of about, I got 15 of them, so I don't think we're going to be able to do this in a one-hour session. We'll either maybe stretch it out a little bit, or we could... Uh, just go ahead and take it over to Tuesday, April 14th. Yeah, uh, whatever we need to do to be able to go through the tools that I use uh, for everything from setting up terminals to remote desktops to SSH clients to wireless sniffers to just all kinds of stuff. Uh, none of the stuff that I have is top secret or anything like that, but through the tools I do use. And uh, for any of you guys who've known me for a while, I always keep my big pile of cool tools for the desktops and laptops, but I've never really done it for a smartphone before. Part of the reason is I've been reticent to do that simply because these apps change so quickly that it's really hard to keep track of what's best or newest at any given moment. And, uh, but I think we've got a good list. So please tune in. This is gonna be next Monday, April 13th at two o'clock Central Daylight Time here in the good old US of A. And we're gonna be talking about the kind of tools that you can put Primarily on your Android, we're certainly going to be talking about iOS too, but really when it comes to the really, in my opinion, the coolest tools, you probably need to go Android, although iOS has some great stuff as well. So that's the first thing. The second thing I want to announce is that uh, we got an email from CompTIA, and they're going to do a big webcast on April 14th that's going to break down the details of the online testing. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be fairly early. And so if it works out well, I'll be able to report on, well, whatever CompTIA lets me report on. CompTIA tends to be very secretive about these things. But the online testing is clearly kicking in. And uh, so we're going to be doing this big webinar with CompTIA, seeing what that's all about. And then I'll, of course, immediately send that information on to you guys. Uh, if I don't do it on the 14th, I'll do it on the 15th. And even if you can already log into their site, uh, stay, please tune in on the, on the 15th, 14th and or 15th so I can give you the, the nitty gritty details. Hopefully things like costs will be locked down and how you go through it, the whole shebang, hardware requirements, that kind of stuff. So uh, definitely tune in on that. 
Uh, the other thing that's actually kind of interesting, I feel like New York, Walter Cronkite. I feel like, uh, so you know, here at Total Seminars, uh, if you're an instructor who's teaching an active class right now, you can have free access to whatever class you're currently teaching. Uh, so practice questions and, and simulations. And just, if, you, if we got it, you get access to it. Not only that, we're working hard with McGraw-Hill right now to set up a deal where you, in certain circumstances, it's complicated because they're McGraw-Hill and, well, they're complicated, that you can even get free eBooks. So uh, you're going to have to contact Kathy Yale. Let me type her address in here. So contact Kathy Yale at totalsim.com. And by the way, if you're not a teacher teaching an active class, don't bother calling Kathy thinking you're going to pull the wool over her eyes. She's a pretty sharp cookie and it won't work. So don't even bother trying. Uh, she's pretty good at this. So what's actually interesting is that now, uh, I don't know if they started today, but I just heard about this today. Um, so uh, this uh, came from my friend Audrey O'Shea, who's in upstate New York. She's an instructor up there. And uh, it ends up that you certify is also giving away a very similar situation. And CompTIA theoretically has been doing this for a while, which I hadn't heard about till now. So man, if you're an instructor, this is like happy days. You should be like hitting all these people up, grabbing as much product as you can and just piling it up man, and just grab all you want. And that includes our stuff too. Um, so uh, that, that's pretty exciting. So those are, those are the big pieces of news that I've heard about so far today. Anyway, so let's go ahead and dive into stuff. I'm really excited about Monday. I can't wait to show you guys some of the tools I use. I think you're gonna be really shocked about what you can do on a smartphone. All right, let, let me scroll up. Everybody's chitty chatting, see who's here. Hey, it's Paul Murphy, Thomas Hearn. Hey, Mike, in your Net Plus book, there's a part that says, remind me to tell you the time I installed a rack in an abandoned bathroom and the toilet later exploded. Okay, it's a true story. Uh, so I was doing some work at an old natural gas plant in uh, Southeast Texas. Um, I can't remember the name of that town. It's like Nederland. Uh, look it up on the map. It's like in the middle of nowhere, Texas, almost Louisiana. <clears throat> and it was a natural gas plant that had been shut down and it was just laid dormant and birds nests and rats and alligators and all that. We're just trying to clean it up and bring it back up to speed. And it had old uh, pneumatic tools in it. And uh, so there was a bathroom in a shed and I had to bring new electronic tools in to keep the demethanizers and all the stuff working right. It, it's basically a, a standard 19 inch rack with some switches in it and a couple of computers that uh, uh, PLC systems, if you know what that is, that were controlling all this stuff. And well, I had to get electricity because the electricity was from 1947 and uh, I had to get some electricity into there so there was a old water pipe in the bathroom. And uh, I was like, well, maybe I could use this pipe as a conduit. It's the same type of metal, doesn't really matter. I got Romex going through it. Romex is a type of electrical cabling. <clears throat> and so I thought I would just go ahead and feed that thing in there. And I did. And uh, so I got power and I also had, uh, there was another uh, piece of conduit that I was using for low voltage, uh, just good old, Back then, it was probably Cat 5, and uh, so this is all running out throughout the thing, except I made one really bad mistake, one really, really, really bad mistake, and that is I forgot to cut off one of the water lines, the one to the toilet. So and so we're getting this all up and running, and somebody decided they had to go to the bathroom, and eh, there's no water coming in, so they kicked the water back over, and uh, the toilet exploded. It flooded the room. Uh, and something like, you know, uh, probably $150,000 worth of equipment was being sprayed with water. Yeah, it was bad. It was what we call in the industry a bad thing. So that's the story, Thomas Herm, and uh, yeah, absolutely true. Hody Yoma, how's it going, man? My buddy Scott's online, of course. Batman. I'm Batman. Uh, giveaways for today. No, uh, it looks like we're going to be constant. Well, now hang on. Uh, there's always the standard deal um, for anybody who shows up. We always thank you for that. And we offer access to all of our products on the uh, Total Seminars website. Just look below here for the link. And all you have to type in is type that uh, 
code in and you get everything half off. So that's for anybody. I, I don't care who it is. Everybody gets half off. That's an outrageous deal to, to say the least. But uh, we will have a giveaway. We will have a giveaway tomorrow. And so it looks like we're probably going to do it on Fridays. If I had my way, I'd be giving stuff away every day. And unfortunately, my sales department has a dim view on that. So we're, we're working on it here, kids. All right. Skyler, B. Gates, Diego, Mendina, como esta, amigo? Yo hablo espanol para gringo solamente. It's for the Sims and the tester only. Scott Jernigan is reminding me. Sorry, man. Thanks, Nigel. I think you're awesome too, brother. Val Sosa just came from you to me. Watch out as the link on their website to YouTube is. Really? Uh, Jout, so, uh, thank you for letting me know that. I, I don't know what that's all about. Uh, Scott Jernigan, can, did you see what he was saying? That the something on YouTube has a bad link? We'll check that out. Thank you very much for bringing that to my attention. Paul Murphy, you want to hear me play the drums? Seriously, you want to hear me play the drums? All right. I'm a little rusty. Okay, that's all you got. Did that like totally blow everybody's volume there? All right, TS is here. My buddy Brandon's back. Brandon Swenson. Yeah, I'm gonna drum lesson time. I'll teach you ballady and shift to telly. Zachary Krause, is it still worth reading 901, 902 book a year when the new test is out? Absolutely not. Uh, the change between 901 and the, the 900 series and the 1000 series was one of the biggest changes that CompTIA ever did. And uh, no, it's not. I mean, this is the thing, and this kills me. So many folks do this. I, I get five, six emails a week where someone's like, well, I bought your old one, but then I see the things turned out. What's what you got some deal and now you're, you know, you probably got a used book. You can't even return it. Uh, at least if you get them on eBay, you can return any book there is. But yeah, I'm sorry, man. There, there's no good answer to that. You, you know, you, I wish every time somebody said, hmm, I'm thinking I want to go for the CompTIA that I could suddenly like jump into their house and give them like a five minute speech on what they have to do. But the big thing is, is that it shouldn't take you that long to get the A plus certification. I mean, unless you're going through a, a school program, some of them can take an entire year. It just really depends on the school. Uh, for self-study, I always think that about 120 hours of study is about right for most folks. There is obviously a big standard deviation in there based on your skills, based on your study abilities, things like that. Uh, if you use my A plus books, uh, in the intro, I even put a big matrix up there for you to help calculate roughly how much time it's going to take you to take the exam. Piscean, I hope I'm not pisse, pisse. I'm going to murder your name. I am so sorry. Tolowit, how close are we to running out of IPv4 public addresses? Well, we're out. Uh, so you have to understand how IPv4 addresses get passed out. So you, you have the... Uh, IANA, Internet Numbering, Internet Authorized Numbering Authority, Naming Authority, IANA. For years, they would pass out chunks of IPv4, blocks of IPv4 to the regional authorities. So like there's uh, North America, Europe, Asia, South America, Africa, and they have names like Afrinic, stuff like that. Well, these were the regional authorities, and then the ISPs would go to the regional authorities to get... Uh, blocks of IPv4 addresses. Uh, IANE no longer has any. All of the regional authorities, I think Africa still has a very, very few, are gone. So it ends up now, if you need a block of addresses, either your uh, IP address, Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, thanks Scott, uh, either your ISP is begging from somebody else to get some, uh, it's, it's like, where for example, you can't, class A addresses are long gone. I'm sure there's a few class Bs out there, but everything else is now a, a CSL ID, you know, so you're gonna get, if you get a block of addresses, it's probably gonna be like a WAC 26, that kind of stuff. And they're spendy, uh, so they're gone. Hmm, <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah, we're out of IP4. No, they, Paul, they, you can still get them. You, you can still get them, but they're going to be real small blocks. 
And every time I think there's nobody typing, and then all of a sudden this thing scrolls past a million miles here. Can you please link the website where we register for the CompTIA A+. Uh, hey, Scott, can you put that up for him? It's uh, Pearson View. Am I saying it right? Yeah. So uh, Moscow, hang on a minute. I'll have Scott Jernigan uh, type that in for you. So just keep watching and Scott will have it. Bear with me, guys. And you got me. So today I was doing yoga. Yeah, I know. Laugh all you want. I'm doing yoga. And uh, Oh, it's already up. Thank you, Scott. Scott, I'm, I'm not even like halfway through the scrolling here. Uh, doing yoga and <laughs> I worked out. Yeah, I'm working out all the time, guys. You're going to be seeing less of me every day, kids. Um, Matt Jefferson. Hello, Mike. Hope all is well. All's great, although I'm sore from yoga. And I thought yoga would be easy. I thought yoga was like just stretching and stuff. Yoga's, yoga's a it's hard. I mean, it's like Tarzan hard. I got this tiny little lovely lady who specializes in old fat, stiff guys like me. And, and she's wonderful. And, and we're actually doing it all remotely now because of the virus. And uh, uh, she kills me. Tuesdays and Thursdays with Miss Jenny make me really enjoy Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's all I'm going to say on that. Matthew Hutz. Andrew Hutt, sorry, Andrew, good to see you again, man. A friend of mine just asked if he could get if he could get away with using a 500 watt rated GPU. You mean PSU, power supply, right? On a 480 watt power. Oh no, you're actually talking about you've got some big graphic cards in there. Uh, it's one of those things where a lot of times these ratings are based on peak power, and could you get away with it? Maybe, but. You know, then you start having weird things. You get weird reboots because the system doesn't have enough juice sometimes. And, you know, uh, yeah, you're not going to break anything by trying. I will tell you that. You're going to get reboots. You're going to be in the middle of a great game and suddenly the thing goes kathunk because it ain't got enough juice. But uh, you could try it and see if you can get away with it, especially... Yeah, look, if they've got a if they got a big graphics card in there, that means they're gaming. And that means if they're gaming, that means they're going to push the graphics card. Again, you're not going to break anything by trying, but uh, it's probably going to be unsuccessful. Nigel's disappointed that I didn't tell you a way to safely download movies. The problem is I can show you how to safely download movies. The problem is I don't know how to show you how to... I won't show you how to illegally download movies. Um, I'm not even going to get into that, man. There, go get on Google and type it in. There, there's zillions of places to do that. I, I'll give you a clue. It's probably going to include a VPN or torrents. How's the filming of Security Plus going? Uh, I haven't started filming yet. At this point in the game, we're just... Uh, Still, we're, we're, I always try to get the book done first. So at this point, uh, we're, we're getting, getting work on the book because the, the videos will be based on the book. And the order that the videos are shot and all that will be based on the book. So what I will tell you is, uh, yeah, the new Security Plus is going to be a bit more challenging. Um, it has a lot of, uh, not a lot of new topicality, but a lot more drill down into existing topicalities. It's not so much just, you know, memorizing a port number as it is to, you know, understanding why having that port um, number is open, uh, why that's bad in a particular log file, and what are you going to do about it? So. Yeah, I pay for things like an adult. And the audio is good, so I am so happy. Hodioma, Professor Messer once said that your book goes well beyond the A-plus objectives. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely it's true. Uh, look. My goal in life isn't really to get you to pass the A+. Plus. My goal in life is to make you into a great tech. And uh, I think it's really important to go into topicalities that are either more core conceptualizations that aren't on the A+, plus or things that are beyond the A+. Plus. In fact, I work really hard. If you look at every chapter of, of my books, there's going to be a historical conceptual, then there's going to be 
test specific, and then there's going to be beyond. So for those of you who don't really want to uh, get into that stuff, and I, you know, I don't know why that would be true, but uh, you know, well, I just want to know what's on the test. Come on, man, be a good tech. If you're a good tech, you're going to pass the A plus like a king anyway. The, you know, I, I I get scared because I see these people, and they're like, oh well, you know. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I think I like computers, so I'm going to go get A plus and get certified, and that, that's just wrong. Uh, I love this stuff. I mean, my idea of a red hot Saturday night is playing with technology, and I, I, I think I might have competitors out there that might play more towards that. Actually, Professor Messer goes into some good depth too. I, I, I've listened to a number of his uh, uh, of his uh, presentations. I think I'm more entertaining than him. Uh, but he has great information. I, I would never challenge that. I wouldn't be surprised to say that he's probably toe to toe more knowledgeable than I am. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I yeah I, I definitely go outside of the scope of the A plus and the net plus and the security plus because I want you to be a good tech. And uh, I, I put stuff in like in the historical conceptual, not because I'm trying to show off, not because I'm trying to you know talk to you about how we used to use whale blubber to make wagon wheels work. No, we're talking about core concepts that help you understand. Look, I'm sorry, you're never really going to understand hyperthreading if you don't really understand pipelining. It's not going to happen, okay? You're not really going to understand the difference between an AMD versus an Intel processor unless you understand uh, uh, pipeline, pipeline length, uh, caching functionalities, and all that type of stuff. No, it's not on the A+. You got me on that. Man, I'm, I'm trying not to curse right now. Dog darn it. As a tech, you should have a core understanding of these things. And yeah, and I label the parts that are historical, conceptual, and beyond A plus, so you don't have to mess with it if you don't want to. But I do it because it's cool, or what I call CIC, because it's cool, you know? When I'm training you, there are just certain things I'm gonna do. Number one, I'm gonna teach you what's on the exam. Obviously, we gotta cover that. Uh, number two, I'm going to teach you the stuff that you don't, and listen carefully, I'm going to teach you things that you don't know that you don't need to know, okay? I want you to think about that for a minute. As baby techs, uh, you're what I call Swiss cheesers. A lot of cheese, but a lot of holes. And my job is to fill that with knowledge so you can have an understanding with that big cheese that is uh, the, uh, being a good uh, technician. Uh, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you what you need to know. I'm going to teach you what you don't know that you don't need to know. And last thing, I'm going to teach you some stuff cause it's cool. Uh, I like cause it's cool. No offense, man, but you know, there's a lot of topicalities out there that we go through and here's me and poor Scott Jernigan looking at this topic. I'm going, this is a wall of text and, uh, we, we don't like walls of text. So that's usually where we'll throw in a little joke or a little humor, or a fun sidebar, and stuff like that to, you know, it needs to be a little bit fun. You know, there's things in my A plus book. There are so many Easter eggs in there. It's not even funny. My cell phone number's in there. Uh, most of my online characters are on there. Uh, I, I, I love it when every now and then like uh, we find some, I'd be online and somebody would type in the chat, are you Mike Myers? I was like, yeah, come on, man, let's play. Whatever it might be. So that was always fun. Okay, so Moscow is still asking for the register for the uh, CompTIA A+, plus, or I just haven't scrolled for a while, huh? Yeah, Batman, I'm an okay drummer. You should see Scott Jernigan drum. He's amazing. That is Middle East drumming. I was doing a, a beat called a ballady shifting to a maksum. How's that for fancy talking? So in Middle Eastern drumming, well, here in the West, we have things like a polka or a waltz, right? Or a two-step. And in Middle Eastern drumming the, and the dancing, it's ballady, maksum, shift to telly. Scott knows him better than me. Wow, Mr. Sosa, you love installing, uh, okay. Uh, you love installing custom ROMs on Android. I gotta tell you, I'm uh, not as big of a fan of that. I'm not against it. I've certainly done it a few times. I've also turned a couple of uh, perfectly nice phones into uh, drink coasters doing it because I didn't pay attention. Uh, but it, uh, it is a nice thing to do. Um, the other thing is, is I've been using Google phones so much lately 
this uh, Samsung Galaxy Fold is the first time I've dropped back to Samsung in a while. And I got to tell you, if there was a time I would need a custom ROM, it would probably be on something like this because mainly all the crapware that uh, Samsung puts in. That's the nice thing about the Google phones is that uh, there is no crapware at all. It's the, the pure Android environment. So it's very, very cool. Uh, Cytogen mod, I, I use uh, for, uh, uh, Cytogen mod is good. I, I've used it. Uh, I've been using uh, a TRWD, which is not as well of a known uh, boot ROM, but I like it. Wow, goodness sakes, this thing scrolls. Sorry guys, there we go. What is a good IT online training platform that you like? Well, I could think of one, it's called totalsim.com. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a pretty good program. They're all good. Uh, I, I love lynda.com, I love udemy.com. I, I think they all have their own things going. And I actually think they serve different audiences depending on what you're looking for. Um, but uh, yeah, they're all good. I, I, here, you want one? www.totalsim.com. There we go. And you're set. Yeah, Scott is usually on the other drum. Scott has big, big drums. Boom, boom, boom. Is the code MMLive406 for CompKey exams to get discount or for the tools that are offered in Total Sim? It is for our training materials at totalsim.com. So no tools, just training materials, practice questions, and sims, which are the big things. Moscow, don't tease me, man. Yoga is important. I hate it. I mean, I really hate it, but, you know, it's getting to the point where I don't think I'd touch my toes since, like, 2003. So I definitely need to start, you know, working on my flexibility a little bit. Uh, Andrew, I don't think underclocking is going to, you know, the, the CPU just doesn't burn that much extra juice compared to a big, beefy uh, graphics card. I mean, sure, underclock it. I mean, it wouldn't hurt anything. There, you want to talk about getting spurious reboots. Anytime I, anytime I mess with clock settings on a CPU, either over or underclock, <clears throat> yeah, it, it gets ugly. You know, I'm thinking about what you said earlier about I put more than what's on the A+. I do. But there's a lot of stuff I don't put in the book that I would really, really love to put in the book. Like, for example, I would love to do a real detailed understanding of L1 versus L2 versus L3 caching. Understanding what set associativity means, understanding what tag addresses are. It, it's You want to talk about fascinating space age Buck Rogers stuff, get a AMD caching engineer and an Intel caching engineer and strip them down their underwear and throw them into a padded room and just before you shut the door go, the best caching methodology is and then shut the door real quick because it is amazing world. And uh, it, there's some math to it a little bit, uh, linear algebra kind of stuff, but it's not that bad. And I would love to put that in the book. I, I, I think people get the biggest kick out of it. The other one I want to put in the book is RAM timings. I mean, really go into RAM timings properly. Uh, so few people understand RAM timings. And for most of us, because most of the time we're just putting in the right RAM for that particular motherboard, we're stamping it in, we don't worry about that stuff. But the moment you start getting into overclocking scenarios and things like that, RAM timings become really, really critical. And uh, it surprises me the lack of knowledge out there on it. In fact, I haven't seen much even like uh, Linus Tech Tips and people like that. I would have thought would have done that by now, and they haven't. Uh, but yeah, I got a lot of topics like that I would love to drill down into. But you know, it's, it's, it's how far down do I go and still be historical conceptual? And to be honest with you, understanding three way versus four way set associative RAM caching isn't even going to help you understand the A plus questions that are there. So I don't do it. I want to, but I don't. Uh, Gino. Hey, Gino, I actually saw you on uh, LinkedIn today, man. 
Uh, in reference to programming conversation yesterday, New Jersey needs COBOL coders for the 40 year old mainframes. Yep, I did hear about that. Yep. And they had, I think it, uh, they had a picture. I don't remember the news source it was. They had a picture of a bunch of old guys, like old guys, kind of walking in like, with canes and stuff, trying to save the day. You like the fast tracker and brainiac sections? Thanks, I think. Mike, are you concerned about the constant personal data collection in the industry? This is from TS. Yeah, uh, I'm very concerned. I, uh, I'm pretty much completely unhooked from Google, real close. Uh, I, I don't use the Google search, in, search engine at all. Uh, I'll use alternatives you probably heard of like Start Page and DuckDuckGo. Even DuckDuckDo has some question marks to it. Uh, I use a Firefox browser exclusively, both on uh, my desktop, my laptops, and my mobile devices. I only use Firefox. I put a lot of tools in there to clean that out. Oh my gosh, Scott Jernigan, that's another thing we should do. What a great idea. Mike Myers, super genius. Let's have another specialized uh, day talking about the add-ons that you should use in your browser. That, that could go on forever. That'd be fun. Oh, yeah, I'm concerned. Even like even on my Android phones, uh, the only one that has a legitimate uh, Gmail address is my main phone. But even on this, uh, all types of history. And you can turn all this stuff. Okay, I will not say <laughs> G word because I don't, don't want everything to go off. Uh, the... Uh, Location history I've turned off. I've turned a lot of stuff off. I, I have enough experience with the uh, law enforcement world to learn what they can do. And this is stuff that they can do without warrants. And uh, I always hate it. Then people say, well, Mike, if you don't do anything wrong, well, then you have nothing to worry about. And my response to that is, first of all, most people these days probably commit a felony a year and don't even know that they're doing it. And number two, you're right, I don't have to do anything wrong. I just have to be within the grenade blast of somebody who is doing something wrong. And next thing you know, I get knock and talks on my front door. So I'm, uh, I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm pretty private about that stuff. Uh, Google used to say, first do no evil. I, I, I don't believe that to be true. I don't think they're evil so much as just a big old, big old steamroller that just crushes all the bugs as it wants to go wherever it's going. Yeah, TS, don't get me started on personal security. I'll go for days on that one then. Moses Park, what's the difference between a hotspot and Wi-Fi? Okay, uh, Wi-Fi is a industry sales term for uh, 802, uh, IEEE 802.11 standard radio-based wireless transmission methodology. It's been around now for a little over 20 years. And uh, that usually manifests more often than not in that you have a, uh, some device out there known generically as a wireless access point, and then that wireless access point transmits out. And people with laptops and phones and stuff like that have uh, 802.11 client tools on there and they can connect to the wireless access point and sometimes they have to type in SSIDs or they have to type in passwords, whatever it might be, and they make a connection. So the term hotspot, in my opinion, simply means a, a, a wireless access point of some type that provides some amount of public access to it. So, uh, and it doesn't, and, and public doesn't necessarily mean wide open, uh, especially with uh, the next generation of WPA coming out pretty soon, which is gonna be WPA3, which is fascinating stuff, guys, man. I'll tell you, uh, you need to read about this standard. It's open standards, anybody can read about it. Uh, like there will no longer be unencrypted connections. Do you guys know that even to this day, 10% of wireless access points out there are still doing WEP or WPA encryption to this day. I can hack those two in seconds. Uh, WPA2, that's going to take me a little bit longer. But uh, with WPA3, man, everything we've known about hacking wireless networks is just going to be thrown out the window. And uh, all of those cool Kali Linux tools that I've been using for years are going to be garbage. Uh, WPA3 is going to stop that cold. Pretty impressive stuff. <laughs> uh, no Linux on CompTIA Plus at all. Uh, I'm going blank. 
Yeah, yes, there's Linux on there is Linux on the CompTIA A plus, absolutely. Uh, Julia Sal, how to learn English. Uh, this is a good place to start, friend. You know, you got a lot of buddies who learned English just by watching American television, and at least with this, you get to talk to me. Moscow. Uh, hey, Mike, I have a question. I'm new to this whole tech world. Goodness. I'm new to this whole tech world, but I'm majoring to be a pen tester. That's a heck of a leap. You know? I'm new to the tech world, but I'm going to go all the way to pen testing in one shot, huh? Okay. Uh, do you think it's smart to get all certifications possible to get a higher salary? No. I think you get a job, and then while you're working and making money and paying the rent, you pursue certifications. Get a job. Number one, get a job. The only exception I would say to that would be somebody who's in a formal accredited school where the school's providing, like here in the United States, we have uh, four-year college degrees, bachelor's degrees. We have associate's degrees. Private schools often have their own type of, of certification and accreditation. Uh, but those schools provide a much broader program than just certification. Keep in mind, certification is a little badge you can put on your chest that tells interviewers and human resource departments that you at least have a chance at having a core set of skills. Uh, certifications are great, but they're not going to get you a job. As I always say, certifications won't get you a job. They're either going to get your foot in the door or they're going to put your resume at the stack, at the top of the stack. So no, get a job, go to work. Okay. Well, I'm not qualified for pen testing. That's right. You're not. So do something simple first. Go work for a little mom and pop computer company. Go snap and ram all day. Pull cable. I don't care. But, you know, have some income. Show that you're a part of this industry. And then, then go for more certifications. But this whole idea of just sitting on your rear end and thinking you've got to get X number of certifications and then get a job is wrong. Stop doing that. Go get a job right now. And it will make your resume better. It will give you experience, even if it's not directly in pen testing, you'll get there and uh, you'll, you'll have the experience. And that's where the salaries come from. Not from some, you know, pen test companies don't hire anybody, even people with four-year degrees fresh out of the box. So you're going to have to get some core type of experience first. Thomas Herm, I recently got your Net Plus and Security Plus eBooks. Cool. I recently discovered there's codes for Total Tester in them. Is there? Since it took me a while, I wanted to make a note of that so others who bought it know. Okay, I don't, man, dude. I one of the great things about my business is I live in this big ivory tower, ivory tower full of technology, and uh, I count on partners and sales departments and stuff like that to put all these deals in there. McGraw-Hill often puts deals in. So I literally know nothing about this, Thomas. I'm, if uh, Scott, I'm, I'm not sure if you know where, but uh, you, you might want to be able to answer that. <laughs> Moscow, man, you are, you're a chatty fellow today. Oh, wait, you, I just answered that question. Plural site is for free. Go there, guys. Yeah, go ahead and go to Plural site. It's it's uh yeah. It doesn't hold a candle to what I do. Not a candle. You guys understand when something's free, there's a reason it's free, okay? Hi Mike, your book comp to you just came in today. Thanks, Liu. Uh plan to get my certifications in six months from now. Good. Because I always tell people one of the first things you do when you're gonna go for a certification is you set a day in the future. People are using my books, if you use the matrix in front, you set a time frame up. So it's gonna take you, let's make up a number. So for you, it's gonna be 200 hours, okay? Then you gotta look at a calendar because you have to sleep and you gotta to go to work and you gotta play with the kids and you gotta take out the trash and all those other things that make life up. So you set up a schedule for how many hours per week you can go towards that 200 hours. And then you take a look at that and you go, okay, so that's going to push me out till, you know, I'll make something up. Uh, that's going to push me out till the middle of June, 2020. So you take that. And the next thing you do is you register for the A plus exam. 
you haven't even really started studying yet. You register for the exam and you put your money down because when you do that, heat and pressure make diamonds. And you have got to have that heat and pressure or otherwise you're gonna be like one of these other guys are like, well, Mike, I bought your 801, 802 book, but I just never got to the test. It's because you didn't put any, you didn't light a fire under it, man. Give yourself, you know, put some discipline into this and set that thing. And boy, I'll tell you, when you just gotta sit there, put that money down for your test, you're not gonna to wanna to retake. It happens sometimes, but um, you're not gonna to wanna to retake it. You're gonna study, you're gonna study hard. So always do that. I think that's really important. So Leo, that's a good idea that you're going to give yourself six months, go schedule the exam. Nelson, I got uh, two 16 gig versus four eight gig. What's better for game performance? I'd quickly say nothing, but Scott Jernigan had a thought on this. Oh, okay, Scott did bring up a good point. Uh, it really depends on how your channels are set up. So if you're running dual stick channels, uh, you're probably going to be better uh, with two sticks and if you've got a, a full four stick channel but does that even exist anymore four stick channels scott i don't, I don't think they do uh then you would probably get a little bit but even then man there's just so many other things you can do to make a system faster for gaming you know number one thing people get cheesy on and gets they don't you got to spend money you got you got to spend money on a graphics card graphics card graphics card graphics card graphics card graphics card quantity of RAM, not necessarily speed of RAM, uh, and then high-speed storage for uh, you know a lot of games and high-speed internet. So honestly, RAM would be pretty low on my total pull of concern there. Wait, right, planning a new build with 32 gig RAM with four slots of dual channel. So yeah, I, I, I think you'd be fine with the two 16 gigabyte slots. Gino, you should try DPP yoga. <laughs> Dude, I'm doing yoga, okay? I'm doing, I bought a mat and I got blocks. So I'm doing that part. And I, I should just videotape me doing yoga and just sell it as a comedy routine because it's, you know, it's not pretty, okay? Let's just leave it at that, kids. It's not pretty. Uh, Tulewit, have you thought about making videos to sell as a set on Total Sim with all the topics you really want? Yeah, but you know, I want to do that. But the problem is I have partners and people like that. They're going, who would actually buy that? Well, I'd love to do that. I think it'd be really cool. Definitely cool. Especially like, or when new technologies come out, it's always frustrating to me because uh, like you guys, I often... I'll go to the source of the standards, uh, like T13 committee for storage. Uh, I'll go to IEEE for uh, wireless stuff, uh, things like that, and to get the actual spec. But then how the industry actually applies the spec is very different than the specs. So you'll read about in some spec, here's this really cool aspect. And then you suddenly discover that nobody does it, you know, and it's like, they just don't want to. Um, so the standards bodies are very interesting in the way they handle, you know, what is up to spec and such, because it's the people who actually make the routers and the switches and the computers and the RAM who call the ball on that stuff. And uh, so it's, it's very interesting how that all works out. Well, anyway. Maybe you could write books that aren't related to tests. Oh, I, I got to tell you, Thomas, I've had a lot of people say that to me. Um, Da, 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 da. Messer is more genius than you. I'll be the first to admit that. But I'm a lot more entertaining. Yeah, browser add-ons. Yeah, I think that would be a fun one to do. Why do you only use Firefox? It's Is it just preference for functionality or do you concerns about browsers? I have huge concerns about browsers. Chrome is Google Central and yes, it's a wonderful browser. In terms of functionality, I got nothing wrong with Chrome whatsoever. I feel that Google as an industry is becoming maybe not evil, but less interested in the individual than they used to be. That's only my opinion. Uh, and so I pull away from that. Um, Edge, Edge really isn't a terrible one. 
but Microsoft came so late to the game trying to grab everybody's data that, come on, we have been watching Windows 10 for what? How old is Windows 10 now? Five years? Five years old? It's been there for a while. I mean, I don't like having ads show up on my desktop, so I'm, I'm nervous about anything Microsoft does. Uh, Firefox is, is open source. Uh, Firefox has the best add-ons. The people who have the most security concerns uh, work in, uh, within Firefox, and I like it. And, you know, the Firefox used to have a lot of problems. I think it was a terrible memory leaker, but even those stuff was like 10 years ago. And, uh, you know, badly applied add-ons can still cause problems with Firefox. And it's just, you know, I'm the kind of guy, I'll put a screwdriver to my web browser all day long just for fun. Brave? I'm brave. And um, so, it, it, you know, it's fun. It's, it's fun. That's it. It's fun. I like Firefox. Uh, ba -da -ba. Personal security online. I got to think about that one. Uh, back to Richard, though. Richard Tunsley, owns Firefox. Just preference for functionality? Do you have concern? Well, I, I think I answered that one pretty good. Peter Hunt, can you explain port forwarding? Yes, I can. All right. So I need props. I think I can do this. So most networks use NAT. So, and in, in NAT can manifest a lot of different ways, but the most common way we see NAT is if my phone is a router, on one side you've got a connection out to the internet and this side has a public IP address, okay? Now, on the other side, you tend to, on your own, using private IP addresses. You guys have seen these, 192, 168s, uh, 172.16s, 10.anything. Those are private addresses. Those addresses can only work within the computers in my local area network. 192.168 cannot go out onto the public internet. It'll be eaten by the first router that sees it. <clears throat> so NAT, if you got a little computer in here and he wants to go talk to Google, he'll go out and then his return address will be the public IP address temporarily and the router, because it's a NAT router, remembers that. So basically what you end up having is one public IP address, which is what anybody can see of your local area network. Got that idea? Well, that's fine, but sometimes you want to see things that are going on inside your network. Like, say I got a camera, and I want to be able to use my phone and access that camera, but that camera is within my private network, and it's got like a 192.168.4.15 address, and it is impossible because of how NAT works to access that camera. So what we do instead is we do something called port forwarding. And with port forwarding, that simply means that we're going to say, look, if anybody comes in on port, let's make it easy. Now we're saying coming in on a port number. So they're going to come in on port, usually pick an arbitrary port number, 8181. Nobody uses that port number for anything. Get the idea? So we tell the router, we go, look, if anything's coming in from the internet on port 8181, Go ahead, accept it, don't block it, let it come through, and go ahead, and if any, 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 anything for 8181 goes to that camera. So that's called port forwarding. And so the cameras, most cameras today to access them, uh, they're just web, web servers. Uh, there's other ways to do it, of course, but I mean, keeping it simple with being a web server. So that, that camera is listening on port 80 because it's a web server. You don't have any other web servers in your house. You got a lot of web browsers. They go out on port 80, but they don't listen on port 80. And uh, you set that up within the router itself, and it allows you to go through a NATed network to get to internal resources. So that's a port forward. Man, I got a great video on that. You should check that out. Thomas Herm, it is hard not to commit some sort of felony unknowingly. This is very true. Uh, don't ever let people tell you, well, if you don't do anything wrong, you have nothing to fear because in today's very complicated society, you're all doing bad things and you don't even know it. Okay, goodness sakes, we got a lot of questions. All right. Ernie Casillas, hello, cybersecurity new biz. All right. Mr. Selsa again, why do manufacturers install embedded non root We went through this. I, I, when you, this was like one of the first ones we did last week. And I'm like, nobody does that. And then you guys 
proceeded to punch me in the head and uh, show me that I'm wrong. And I just like, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't believe there was still soldered ram out there. So I don't know why, because maybe it's cheap, because the idea, you know, people like the idea of a sealed system. You know, when, it, when a device gets to a certain price, some people say 300 bucks, it, you, there's no repairability to it really, because it's so cheap, you just buy a new one. So why add those types of add-on functionalities? Is it possible to add more RAM with a higher timing without a heat gun or am I a noob? Uh, is it possible to desolder RAM that is soldered onto a motherboard and put in faster RAM? Almost certainly not in particular because that RAM is gonna be using some kind of, uh, well, the CPU is gonna be counting on a certain speed, for example, and stuff like that. I mean, if you were really good and if you understood RAM timings, then you know maybe you could pull off something like that, but wow. That's the kind of thing where, I mean, if you're doing it for fun, that's great, but the amount of time and effort is worth thousands of dollars of your time. Just go buy some. Ernie Casillas can't pass third time test in A+. Hey, Ernie. This is my private IP address. You guys are all, uh, my private email address. You guys are all welcome to contact me if you want to, but I'm putting this in for Ernie. Just for you, brother. You've taken A plus three times and can't pass. Let's you and I talk. Send me a, just send me a little email and we'll talk. That's uh, that's not acceptable. We'll fix that. Uh, Black Bash Entertainment. Black Bash Entertainment got 85 on total tests on both Core One and Core Two. Are you good to take the A plus now? Yeah, probably. I uh, like when I used to shoot pool for money back in the day. We would play snooker. I don't even know. You guys even know what snooker is? Imagine pool, but with little tiny. Uh, pockets. And so then when I'd go to the quarters machines in the bars, those pockets looked this big. I was like, Willie Moscone, man, I was knocking them dead. I, I kind of had the same attitude on my tests. I pushed the pass rate a little on the high side because I want to make you guys do some push-ups. Uh, but yeah, if you're doing 85, you're probably fine. Ernie, please help me pass up to A+. Buddy, I just sent you my private IP. Why, why do I say that? My private email address. You send me an email. And we'll set it up, and you and I will be able to talk on the phone. I'll be able to help you out. Uh, Caesar, college or high-level certs like Cisco? Is this a question? College or high-level certs like Cisco? Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, Caesar, four-year degree is always the best way to go if you can do that. As long as you're, is, is it's a STEM-type course. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm no offense to those with sociology degrees, but sociology degrees just don't pay the rent, in my opinion. Uh, but if you're gonna go for a programming degree or an engineering degree, yeah, that's always gonna be the better way to go, if possible. Um, but even with those guys, remember there's over 700 different IT certs out there, man. So I'm just the entry level guy. I concentrate on A plus, net plus, security plus. I'm the beginner's dude, you know, and that, that's the lane I stay in. But uh, you, you would always go for uh, those uh, degrees first and still get the certification. Uh, can you do well in this industry without a four-year college degree? Absolutely. But you're going to have to put in some time. You know, the guys with the four years degrees, you know, they don't start out at Best Buy. Uh, so and some of them do. But um, if you can pursue a four-year degree and not put yourself in hock for the rest of your life, man, I feel bad for young people today. This, these college uh, loans, you know, you can't even declare bankruptcy. I mean, back when I was a kid, you know, Ronald Reagan took away my uh, grants and I had to have loans back then, but they're not nearly as onerous as they were today. How did you learn technology back in the day? Julia asked me. Well, I, uh, I, was, I, I was hanging out with some guys who had a uh, stereo shop and they had a, a, old, a very, very old computer called an S100 unit. Don't worry about it. And I just got interested. And I always hung around technology and I made a point to get around technology. You can always get around technology if you want to. It's just a matter of, you know, knocking on doors. And, you know, one great thing about being a young person in particular is that y'all have so much more energy than us old geezers do. And, uh, you know, and just be fearless. You know, it, it, just get out there and try stuff. You know, it's old people like me respect young people with guts. Uh, Brandon Swenson is probably a great example of that. Uh, I've, I've known Brandon for almost 20 years. I, he was a little kid when I first met him. 
but Brennan always had guts and was never afraid to ask hard questions. One of the things I always tell people is, look, if you're not asking me so many questions that you're not pissing me off a little bit, you're probably not asking enough questions. Now, don't do it just to be uppity. Do it because you have legitimate questions. But especially in today's society where people are so antisocial, I don't know what the right word to use. I don't want to, don't okay boomer me here, okay? Because that's not what I'm trying to do. But it just feels to me a lot of times that uh, um, younger people today are, are reticent to have conversation, certainly face to face. And just don't be afraid. Be fearless. Get out there. Brandon E. Hey, Mike. Love to listen to your video series while I'm driving or working. Do you have a podcast? Uh, no, I never really thought about that kind of stuff. Even this thing of what we're doing here is kind of new. Uh, sorry, guys. It is pollen season here in Texas, and I'm just one big itch. Um, I'll think about it, Brandon E. Thank you for the idea. You know, Nigel, I, I don't try to be funny. I just, uh, I find humor in life. And I find, especially in technology, there's often a lack of humor. So for me, it's, you know, trying to cut up a little bit and have some fun is, uh, there, I don't, there ain't nothing wrong with that. So, yeah. I was told I should do stand-up. Daniel Wilson. Oh, man, we only have four minutes left. Hi, Mike. Currently going to Network Plus. It's great. Thanks. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, we're going to tar Department of Technology in San Francisco. Manager City. San Francisco has a wonderful WAN. I got to tell you, Daniel, uh, I, I would. we don't have enough time today, but come back tomorrow or next week and tell us, just put a paragraph in there, like how you got that job. What's your education? I, people are very, very interested in this. Uh, Daniel, again, are there any certifications I should look into after Network Plus? Uh, if you're doing a citywide WAN, you really need to look at Certified Wireless Network Professional, CWNP. Wonderful certification for enterprise-level wireless networks. And I guarantee you there's plenty of people uh, in your department who know exactly what that is. Hodo Yoma, heat and pressure makes demands. Heat and pressure makes diamonds. But yeah, I get the idea. Gina Parat. Parada. Hey, Mike, I purchased your A-plus all-in-one exam. How do you suggest tackling both? Uh, it depends. If you're a reader, read the book and then do the videos. So the, the videos track almost one-to-one -one with the books. So don't skip a chapter without doing both. Maybe you like to read first, then watch videos. Maybe you like to watch videos and then read. Um, you know, so it, it doesn't matter. Uh, go the way you like to go. Some people are visual. Some people are kinesthetics. Some people are audio. It's your learning methodology that works. Hoda, what, what does the CPU use to access the system RAM? Okay, now you got to be careful here, Hoda, because the system bus is really more of a concept anymore than a real thing. I mean, it is a bus, but the system bus is how the actual ones and zeros move from the RAM into the CPU buffers. The address bus is how the CPU decides which byte of RAM it wants to grab. So they're very different things. So you can almost think of the address bus as a big channel changer that changes to whatever particular chunk of RAM you want. And then it's the system bus that actually sends it into the CPU itself. Uh, Julius Sal, man, you know, you, you're, I don't like people stealing stuff from me. You know, I almost would have rather you just asked without telling me you're grabbing torrents. I'm going to skip that. It's going to make me crabby. Okay, so guys, it looks like we're running out of time again. So first of all, remember, I am here every day at 2 o'clock Central Daylight Time. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have a generic day, uh, just ask answering questions again. However, I do want you guys to know we will have some form of giveaway tomorrow. I guarantee we will have a giveaway. And if my salespeople don't like it, tough. I'm the president, and sometimes I got to do what I got to do. Also, keep in mind that this is... Uh, for anybody who's on, all you got to do is use the link directly below and type in this uh, little address, type in this code, and you get everything. Uh, you get all the, the practice questions and simulations for 50% off. And last and, and certainly not least, if you're an instructor having an active class right now, you need to contact Kathy Yale from my office. And uh, I've typed in her email address a couple. Here, I'll do it one more time.
Yeah, that's how fast I type, kids. Uh, you can contact her directly, and we are prepared to give away for instructors of, of active classes anything they need so that they can... Uh, and John Goodman just went on timeout. So, um, Hoda is not disrespectful. He's just trying to do his thing. All right, guys, I got to get out of here. Thank you so much for coming. As my yoga instructor would say, namaste. I will see you guys at two o'clock tomorrow. Be ready with questions. Uh, I'm, I'm always here for you. We're going to be doing this for the duration. So this could last for months. As long as we get plenty of people showing up as we're doing like this, I will keep this up every day. And I can't wait to, uh, can't wait to see you guys tomorrow at two o'clock. Same bat time, same bat channel. Till then, bye.